Hi guys, my name is Alex Rutles. Some of you might know I'm the developer of Image Occlusion Enhanced and a number of other add-ons for Anki. And in this video I want to introduce you to one of my new projects which I've been working on for a very long time now and it's called Close Overlapper. So just right off the bat so you know what this add-on is all about, the main use case for this is memorizing lists, enumerations and sequences of information in Anki. Now, if you've used Anki before, you'll know that this is one area where Anki and pretty much all flashcard software really have a weakness. It's one of the most difficult things to really transform into flashcards. And for this reason, I've come up with an add-on that I think will really help you with this process. So, the video will be divided up into three sections. In the first one, I'll give you a general overview of the problem and the possible solution I found. The second section will cover the um, a number of examples and use cases where I think this add-on will really shine and help you with studying. And the third section will just be a quick overview of the basic use of the add-on, which I will further extend on in a second video, which I ho hope to release soon. All right, let's start then with the basic principle. So when I started working on this add-on, which was about a year ago, my main issue really was finding a way to transform lists and enumerations into Anki flashcards. And as I'm studying medicine, this is really something which I'm confronted with in, in each day. You can't really go uh, through one or two pages of a textbook without stumbling on some kind of enumeration or list. So, so the question really was, how do I transfer that information to flashcards? And what I started up, started doing first, at first at least, was to just simply use a basic note type where on the front I'd have the title of a specific list and on the back it would then ask me to list each of these items. Now the weakness of this is pretty obvious. If you can't recall one of these items, the question is how do you actually rate the card? Do you rate it as a failure because you didn't recall one out of eight items or do you say yeah I failed one but at least I recall all the seven others so I shouldn't really uh, mark it as a failure, but rather maybe mark it as difficult. So it's, it's very difficult to memorize information like this, and it really goes against one of the main principles of spaced repetition, which is the, main, the uh, minimum information principle. You want to divide your information up as far into small chunks as possible. So I saw that this really wasn't an effective method, so I went ahead and then tried another option, which was to just form questions for each of these list items so that they, they can go through the sequence and ask for each item that follows a specific one. So for instance if we have this list of the viral replication steps I would go ahead and ask what's the first step of um, replication? Replication. What does the uh, virus have to do in order to enter the cell? How does it proceed after it has entered the cell etc. So I would then create uh, maybe eight or ten questions for each of these lists. And while this was effective in actually helping me memorize the lists, it also was an incredible amount of time I'd have to put in just to create the flashcards. So I thought there must be a better way. And what I then tried out was using closed deletions, which I um, found um, a lot of other people had recommended using. And um, while it did seem like it worked at the start, and it really was a huge benefit that I didn't really have to put that much uh, time in anymore to create these flashcards, I quickly um, recognized that I didn't really remember the information all that well. And I think that's because these standard closed deletions, deletions just provide you with way too much context. So for instance, if you're um, if you're trying to remember this item which is targeting specific structures inside the cell, the only thing you really need to know in order to answer this is to know what was the step before it, what did the virus go through before it. it just encoded, so okay, now it needs to find the structures it will have to uh, target in order to um, proceed with its replication. But if you have all of these other steps listed, then it's very easy to recall this information just by matter of excluding all the other options that are available. So this really wasn't that effective, I found, in actually helping me study all of these lists and sequences. So what I did then is just sat down and just thought about ways to solve this. And one of the major helps in that was just reading through the um, 20 Rules of Formulating Knowledge 
by Pyotr Wozniak, who is the founder of um, Spaced Repetition Software. He was the one who created Super Memo, which um, Anki is based on. So one thing that he listed as an option in order to deal with lists, now first of all, let's start with that, he said that you should really avoid lists as much as you can because it really goes against that minimum information principle that spaced repetition software really is based on. But in some cases you can't really do that, right? In some cases you can categorize stuff and just put the information into smaller chunks, which I think is an important thing, whatever you do. But for sequences, for instance, you can't really do that. It's very difficult because the entire sequence um, is just one entity that you really have to represent somehow. So in cases like this, what Wozniak recommend is to use, use some kind of overlapping prompts and a type of overlapping closed deletion where each of the items which you were prompted for would then serve as the context queue for the next item. And by doing that, what you can achieve is you can just build the links and relations between each of these items. It's pretty much the same thing that we did before with the manual flashcards we created, but just formatted as a closed deletion. And that's what the add-on does. It goes ahead, takes a list of items and just creates a series of cards and follow exactly that principle where each of the items is tested based on the context it's in without revealing all the rest of the items. But you can completely customize this. You can completely set up how many items of context you'd like to see before the prompt, how many items you'd like to see be, uh, after it. You can also customize how long the prompt should be. You could set it up to be two items on each card. So as we walk through the item, you will see how powerful this can be. For each item, we now have the context of the one before it and the one following it. And this way, we create a very strong connection between each of these items. And all of these will then be linked in our memory, which will make it much, much easier to recall it, recall all of the lists, all of the um, enumeration at a later point. And of course, as you also want to remember the whole list in its entirety, as part of each of these nodes, the add-on will also always generate one card that uh, asks you about all of the information at once. Now this card will be incredibly difficult to answer at the start, but as you go through all of these reviews and start memorizing each of the individual items, this will then become much easier. So this is the natural evolution, natural difficulty step that you will have to tackle as soon as you've managed to deal with all of the other cards. Okay, so that's as far as the basic principle of the add-on is concerned. Let's take a quick look at some use cases and examples where this add-on can really shine. So, the first thing I'd like to do is I want to take a step outside of medicine because that's always what I present in my videos. So let's go ahead and look at this here, which is a sequence of checks you have to perform as a pilot before landing, just to be sure that you can safely land. And something like this with 14 items in it is very difficult to memorize. Now, pilots use a acronym or a mnemonic for this, which is Obumfitch, which can help definitely. But still, if you have all of these items, it's still very difficult to recall it, even with this mnemonic at hand. So that's where the add-on comes in. You put in your list and it automatically generates a number of cards where each of the previous items serves as a context for the next one. And as you see in this example, uh, in contrast to the one before it with viral replication, we only have one context item before the actual prompt. We don't have one on each side, just one before it. And once again, we can walk through each of these items and you can see how easy it can become then to memorize a long list like this. Okay, back to medicine. So one other use case I think where I personally found this add-on to be incredibly useful for is uh, memorizing pathways and other types of um, sequences that lie in some that um, really form a causal relationship where each item has um, has a reason for being there, you know, where each item interacts with the next one. Um, this can be the case for pathways like this one, neuroanatomical um, pathways. It can also be the case for biochemistry, for chemistry in general. So there's a lot of areas where this applies to. And the great thing about the add-on is that it doesn't really doesn't need you to format the items as one item per line, but you can define exactly which part of the line you want to be um, closed. So it works in the same way as normal closed deletions, as far as that's concerned. So here, for instance, you can see that I had um, to learn the pathway that controls um, melatonin, melatonin secretion. It's a hormone that controls uh, the day and night cycle. And as you can see, you have just a lot of structures that really are involved in this process. 
and you also have feedback loops. So for instance, in this case, we had one item that appeared both at the top of the list and at the bottom because there is a feedback from the last item um, to the first. So that again can also be translated into cards using this add-on just by custom definitions of which areas you want to close and which areas you want to group together. All of this is possible with the add-on just, uh, just like with um, regular closed deletions. So let's go through this and then look at the next example. And the next example then will be about um, the classification of the uh, vertebrates in this case. And here you have a, an example where you don't really need the context queue as such, but rather an example where you where a close overlapping or rather a, um, a close deletion can really help you um, design these cards faster and more efficiently instead of having um, different flashcards that ask you about the domain, the kingdom, uh, etc. of a specific species. What you can do is you can just put all of these on one card and then just close each of these. With regular closed deletions, the issue is that you would have all of these other cards available as hints, and then again, would be too much context, which you don't really need. So with this example, you now have a type of card where the information is not overlapping. If you've used image occlusion before, then you'll see the similarity to the so-called non-overlapping occlusion type, because that's pretty much the same thing, just um, transformed into text. Okay, so let's look then at the next example. This one here is just um, another show, another example to showcase how you can translate any type of information, these lists, if you just know how to categorize it, or rather how to sort it. So for, for instance, here we have a number of organs in the central nervous system that all share, all share a common attribute. They all have an altered blood-brain barrier as compared to the rest of the um, central nervous system. And they aren't really connected directly. They don't follow a specific pathway. But um, you can still arrange them just by looking at their spatial position, at their anatomical position. So in this case, for instance, I created a prompt which said to list the items starting from a specific point, in this case the um, frontal base of the skull, and then just go around in clockwise direction and list each of the circumventricular organs. So you will always have to find some way of putting these into an enumeration, into a specific sorting order. That will very much help you uh, memorize this information. This add-on is really powerful when it comes to stuff that is in a specific order. If you try to use it on information that is unordered, that is just a list of items, a specific list of items, it can become much more difficult. You can, of course, you can devise ways to still order stuff. For instance, you can say if there are a number of symptoms that don't really follow a specific order, you can then just try to um, list them by alphabetical order, for instance. Or you could just just look at um, just uh, maybe look where they occur. So you can go from top to bottom if you look at the body, for instance. Another way which I found helpful for um, going through symptoms, which I will be showing you soon, is that you can also list them, for, in for instance, by their frequency. So um, if you got some symptoms that are way more frequent than others, and they that's a natural order that you can use to formulate cards like this. Now, this example here is also just to demonstrate that you can customize the uh, number of um, prompts that you're presented with. And as well, once again, you can also customize the um, the top and the bottom context for each item. And another thing I didn't mention so far, as far as the template is concerned, it also comes with a remarks section and sources section, which is the same thing as when you're using image occlusion. And it also comes with a hint down here, which you can just click to show you the entirety of the list whenever you need it, or whenever you want to recall all of it at once. Okay, so here then we have the symptoms, which I was just talking about a minute ago. And once again, to demonstrate, you can actually sort anything as long as you find some way to put it in a specific order. You can, I mean, you can memorize anything with this add-on as long as you have that specific order that you can find. And uh, this card should also demonstrate how you can also gradually increase the number of context cues as you go through the card. This is another setting you can use to um, configure your generated cards. And this example here should showcase that you can also use these, this uh, method on any type of text. It doesn't have to be a list. You can also use it to any block of text. And it also supports hints, just like regular cross deletion. So if you'd like to use hints, you could use this 
do this as well with this add-on. And then let's start, let's finish this off with a sonnet by Shakespeare with, I couldn't really do this uh, presentation which, without including at least one poem because I mean, this is one, we all know how difficult it can be to memorize poems from school, right? And this is something which this add-on can also help you with. Uh, if you, There's also another add-on um, which is called the Lyrics Close Poetry Generator by Soren Bjornstad, which is also a great add-on, which follows a similar principle. Um, but yeah, I'd just like to demonstrate that this add-on, the Close Overlapper, will also be able to handle poems. And uh, in here we have a different configuration where you're always presented with just one context item before the thing you're seeing. And um, as you go down, the number of context items of uh, above the um, prompt will stay the same. It will stay at one line, but the prompts or the, the context items below it will um, will always will, will gradually get re reduced. So you gradually increase the difficulty level because you're presented with less and less um, context cues as you go along. So there we go. All right. So I think that's as far as the basic um, use cases are concerned. As you can see, there are a number of ways you can use the add-on. So the question now is, how can you use it actually? How do you do all of this? How do you transform all of your information into cards like these? Well, I promised that it would be easy and I can safely attest that it is really, really easy with this add-on. So for the most basic usage scenario, where you have a ready-made list of items like this one here of the plans of the solar system, the only thing you have to do is you first have to choose the right node type, which is the close overlapping type. This one will be um, created by the add-on automatically as soon as you install it. And having chosen this um, node type, you just have to paste in your list into the original field. Then you click add and that's it. The add-on will directly add these cards to your collection and it will automatically generate the closed deletions. And by default, it will use the following setting, which is one context queue before the item, no context queue before um, after it, and the prompt uh, length will be set at one line, or rather at one item. So that's how easy you can create all of this. Now imagine having to go through all of this manually. Imagine having to go through each of these items and creating, for instance, a basic card that asks you, asks you which planet um, comes in the solar system after Mars, for instance. Just an incredible amount of effort you would have to go through, and that's where this add-on can really be powerful. And as far as the customization is concerned, you can use a menu for this, which is the button up here, um, and you can customize anything you'd like, the context cues, the number of close prompts, the con context after it, after other miscellaneous settings. I'll go over all of this uh, in the next video. And one last point I'd like to show you is how you can actually use the um, use custom close definitions. If you if your items are not organized like this, if you don't have just one item per line, but rather would like to customize the close deletion, you can just use the regular um, close deletion hotkey, which is Control plus Shift plus C, to just um, set up which of these items you'd like to actually be um, be closed on your cards. And it also works with Control plus Shift plus Alt plus C in order to um, insert the same index number again. So it's the same way as when using close over um, regular closes. The only difference is that it uses a different syntax, which are the square brackets here. And it does that because it needs to distinguish between the regular Anki closed deletions and the ones generated by the add-on. If you'd like to preview what this will actually do without adding the cards, you can always use this button up here, which will generate all of the cards down here. So you can take a look at them. Okay, I think that's as far as the basic use is concerned. As I've said, there's much more to this add-on, so I'll be creating a new video soon, which will go through all of the information you need about how it works, how you can configure it, etc. But for now, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope I was able to um, really just demonstrate how this add-on can help you in your own studies. I hope you will give it a try. And uh, yeah, I hope I'll see you soon in one of the next videos. Until then, once again, good luck with your studies and uh, see you soon, guys. Bye.